Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Christian. Hey, Kelly. How you doing? Yeah, good, darling. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, so I'll just give it a, a, a minute or two for people just jumping on. Obviously, lots of lots of people just waiting for that two o'clock to hit and then coming on. Yeah, pretty normal. I can, I can imagine quite a lot of people sitting there just going, oh, I'll just get this done. That's what I've been doing, sat here, logged on for the last 10 minutes. Oh, let me quickly do that email and then yeah. coming back in. <laughs> Seven minutes to go. Cool. I'm going to do this quick task. Five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Cut your own countdown. Um, well, while we're just waiting for, for a couple more people to, to jump on, um, to start by, by saying hello. Um, obviously joined by Christian today, our co-founder co of The Depository. Uh, thanks, Christian. Um, agenda for today's webinar is to, to take a look at how technology solutions and integration with TDS can streamline the deposit protection process. So a bit of a, bit of a mouthful for, for a title, but we're going to make it as easy and simple as, as possible to, to go through. Um, before we kick off, just to run over a few features within the webinar platform itself, um, you'll notice there's a question section on the left-hand side. Um, so as we're going through, any questions that you have, anything that you wanted to, to you know, for us to touch upon, please do um, ask a question there. And we have a, a, a dedicated section to to questions, so we'll uh, we'll come to them at the end. But you know, as as we go, if anything pops up, then um, then do ask away. We also have a notes section in the platform, so you can actually make notes as you go, um, and uh, and then that's sent to you um, after the webinar as well, so you don't have to worry about old school pen and paper. It's uh, it's all there for you in the in the platform to hopefully make things a bit easier. Um, I think we're all accustomed to, to remote working now and the joys that technology can sometimes uh, bring. So if you do experience any internet or connectivity issues. If you just try to refresh your web page in the first instance, um, if for any reason that doesn't work, try closing the webinar um, and the browser and then click back into the webinar reminder email that you'd have had. Hopefully that solves any issues. Um, but if, if all else fails, we will be email uh, emailing you afterwards, any, anyone that signed up with a, with a recording of the webinar so you won't miss out on any of the fun stuff that we're talking about today. Um, so I think we'll make a start. Um, for those I've not met or spoken to before, I'm Kelly Wallace. I'm the sales manager at TDS. Um, I've just celebrated my seven-year anniversary with uh, with TDS, so quite a quite a milestone for me. Um, I predominantly oversee the sales and new business function within TDS, so that's everything from people joining us for the first time, people perhaps moving portfolios over to TDS, uh, people transferring in full from other providers, um, everything from training to getting accustomed to, to the system um, and being able to, to reap the benefits of, uh, of the features that, that we offer. Um, so that's enough about me. I'll, I'll hand over to Christian to do his own introduction. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so yeah, for those of you who don't know me yet, so uh, I am first and foremost an estate and letting agent. Um, primarily lettings. Uh, I've been an agent for about 19 years now, 17 of which has been running and building uh, my company base property specialists. Um, so we're a single branch uh, lettings focused agency based in London. Um, and then sort of four, five, five years ago, we started on a journey with TDS, um, really starting from an agency perspective, looking at what in our business felt really broken, what felt really convoluted and time demanding and messy. Um, and as a company, we sort of uniformly agreed that the end of tenancy process was just all of those things. Um, and so we've been on a journey with the guys at TDS. It was really exciting to have them embrace the fact that we wanted to tackle this really from the get go. Um, and we spent about four years developing and refining this product with them. And then we launched at the tail end of 2019. Um, and yeah, so, so you know, what we're looking to do is, is we've looked at the end of tenancy process from all ends. So our first focus is looking at it from an agent's perspective and how do we make the end of tenancy process as easy as possible for agents. So we automate as much as we can and then we streamline whatever uh, manual tasks an agent has to do within that process. And then for tenants, we wanted to bring a transparency to the process. I think for most tenants, 
they they feel like they're like they're in an unregulated space and for us as agents we all know that is quite quite the opposite of the truth it's heavily regulated but also tenants never really feel like they know exactly where they are in the process and what's involved so we make the entire sort of checkout process transparent in terms of where they are in that journey and what needs to happen between receiving their notice and being moved out so we don't facilitate notice ourselves our platform takes over the process from the moment an agent either gives or receives notice once that has been facilitated we then basically take over immediately after that and take that process all the way through to either a refund or in that two percent of cases a dispute Perfect. Brilliant. Thank you, Christian. I know you're, you're going to go into a bit more detail um, later on in the webinar about how the integration you know, actually works and at what point that kicks in from um, depository over to, to TDS. So um, we will make a start with some general information about TDS custodial. Um, so for, for, for everyone's benefit, the depository originally was integrated with TDS Insured and um, TDS Custodial has more, more recently been brought into the fold on that um, because of demand. Um, you know, we, uh, we identified that actually this product for our insured members was so bene beneficial um, and we didn't want our custodial members to, to, to miss out. Um, so for those who don't currently use TDS Custodial, um, I just wanted to give a bit of an overview of, of really what, what that is. Um, a lot of people are familiar with our insured scheme, our, our custodial. Um, is obviously a newer product in, in general. Um, so TDS Custodial is a, is a free deposit protection um, offering, um, combines our uh, powerful um, online deposit management system with the, the first class service that I, I know uh, so many of our customers are already accustomed to. So Custodial is the, is the free version. Um, we hold the deposit money. Um, you simply register the deposits um, and then pay us over the, the deposit money, which we hold throughout the duration of the tenancy. Um, so it's a uh, yeah, it's a growing scheme and um, and you know, really well well received. Um, so I wanted to just look at a few of our key features in TDS Custodial today. Um, obviously, with the focus being on technology, um, natural for me to, to talk about our API. Um, so the API that we've developed in TDS Custodial is allowing our agent customers to, to utilize their software provider um, and utilize the information they're already inputting into there, which then pulls through to our system. Um, the idea behind it was to, to really cut down on the duplication. So we recognize that our customers are inputting lots of information in different platforms, um, and that's time consuming um, and uh, laborious and you know boring uh, when you're having to do things multiple times. So if we can cut down on that, that's what we've tried to do. So the API um, is working with a number of software providers and actually as, as many as, as possible. Um, so there are a number that are already live with us um, and more that we're working with. Um, so please do let us know who your software provider is. And if we're not already in conversations with them, then we can get the ball rolling to, to, to get that integration in place and, and cut down on, on that administration. Next thing is some um, individual features that we have within the TDS custodial offering itself. So we have a head office and branch structure, um, which allows our customers to have one overarching membership and then have their individual branches, sites, buildings, however you want to manage it, all under one membership. Um, so you're not having to have multiple memberships and logging out and logging back in and going into to, to that, um, again, time consuming element. It's all under one place, allowing you, you know, really easy reconciliation, seeing everything kind of at a glance, what's, what's going on. Um, and paired with that is our multi-user access um, and different levels of permissions that we offer. So this is really quite unique to TDS Custodial. You can set up as many colleagues as you need to um, under the TDS custodial membership that you have. You can have them at head office level, which then allows them to see all sites or branches within that membership. Or alternatively, you can set people up at branch level, so allowing them to see what they need to see. Within that, there are different layers of permissions that you can have. So if you have colleagues who perhaps need to, to see something but not do anything, you can set them up as view only. You can set people up specifically on the finance element, specifically on the dispute element. So it's really giving you that control over your colleagues and, and making sure that people are able to do what they need to do um, and um, you know, easily find what's, what's going on 
uh, it's all managed by you in your own database as well. So actually, if a member of staff were to leave, rather than it impacting everyone's access and everyone having to, to, to redo their passwords and um, re-record all of that, which is very annoying, um, you simply can just suspend that individual's user access or change their permissions if their role were to change without the need of contacting us, all done via your database, which I think is really handy and certainly has been well received in a period of you know, sustained remote working where people are, are not all together and not all in the same office, people in, in, in their homes. Um, so that's a, a really useful feature. A couple of other things within TDS Custodial, um, which is again unique to, to TDS, um, is things like the tenant changeover function. So we often hear feedback from customers, perhaps that have used another provider and are looking at using TDS, that when a tenant moves out mid-tenancy, it's very frustrating. It's a very frustrating process. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be done and a lot of uh, administration involved. We try to make that as easy as possible with TDS Custodial by offering this kind of one click tenant changeover function. Um, so if you've got a tenancy where there's two or two or more tenants and someone mid tenancy is moving out, you can actually um, click the tenant, uh, select the tenant that's moving out, um, repay a partial amount of the deposit to them if they're, if they're owed anything, um, and then also add in new tenants and top it up as you go. Um, so it's, a, again, another really well-received um, piece of uh, software that we've got in, in the database, um, allowing something that could be quite time-consuming and laborious and, and making it as easy as, as possible. Um, alongside that, um, again, just keeping with the theme of making things easier and making your lives easier, um, pre-populated PI um, is something that we offer um, exclusively in, in TDS Custodial. So as we all know, um, protecting a deposit is just one element of the legislation. Um, the second part, and um, I guess that the part that maybe is uh, the, the, the confusing part, um, is the serving of the documentation to the tenant. So that's the prescribed information and also the scheme leaflet. We recognize again that agents are, are having to, to manually fill this in and then serve it to the tenants filling it in with information that we already have um, and that you've already filled in on multiple platforms already. So to make it as easy as possible, we pre-populate that document for you and we then actually email it to you as well. So it's there ready. All you need to do is sign and serve it to the tenant, um, just making that process that little bit easier and complying with the legislation as, uh, as simple as possible. Deposit cap solution, a um, bit old news now. Um, obviously, it's uh, something that's been been around for, for a while, and hopefully, most uh, most of our customers have uh, complied with that on the tenancies that that need to to have that reduced. But if you do find yourself in an instance where there's a deposit that perhaps has been an ongoing tenancy for for quite some time and there's been no changes, and then a change comes about, you can easily comply with this um, with this legislation by making a part repayment of the deposit mid tenancy. So again, there's no uh, kind of strenuous um, filling out lots of different spreadsheets or initiating things in the background. Again, it's a one click solution. Um, tell us what the new deposit amount is, and that triggers an automatic backs payment to the tenant, returning any surplus deposit to them. Um, so again, it's uh, it's really easy um, and helping you to comply with that legislation and making sure you've got um, you know slip ups on it. Seems like quite a simple thing. Um, I tend to talk about this quite a lot with with agents um, because I don't. I, I've never really recognised how um, how time consuming and how frustrating this this part of it is. Um, but update, updating tenant contact details is something that for me just seemed like a, a given. Um, but uh, again, on other platforms, not so easy. Um, if you do recognise that a tenant has not uh, you've, you've not put in the correct details. Perhaps when you register the deposit, you only had a mobile number, for example, you've now got an email address for them, or human error, you've put at hotmail.com instead of at hotmail.co.uk, and therefore the tenant's not receiving the communication from us, you can simply just update those tenant contact details as you need to. Um, so it's not something you need to contact us and ask us to do. There's no lengthy process of having to, to email and ask for it to be changed and authorization, etc. You can simply just log into your database, update the tenant's contact details, um, and then that triggers all of the communication to them. So again, you don't need to do it and then contact us and say, can you send this to the tenant so they can activate their account? The system is, is smart enough to recognize it's a new email address and triggers that communication to the tenant. So um, again, hopefully making that that little bit easier for you. 
Um, last couple of things in terms of the TDS side of things alone, um, the custodial app for tenants. Um, so this is probably one of our newest um, levels of, of innovation where we have developed and launched an app where tenants can log into their accounts. They can manage their, their own little mini, mini accounts, um, updating their contact details, raising repayment requests, responding to repayment requests. Um, meaning that they don't have to you know find a desktop they don't have to struggle using their phone on a website and trying to navigate it that way um, again just keeping with the theme of um, advances in technology you know if, if there's not an app for something it's uh it's you know who even who even wants to know about it so um the app is has certainly been well received by, by tenants and i think it's a really good feature for for our agent customers to you know kind of be promoting for their tenants so again if the the systems and sites that they're using are a reflection of, of their service, having the app is just again making life easier for, for the tenants. As as Christian already touched upon, it's remembering the tenant journey throughout all of this as well. Um, so if we can make things easier for you, fantastic. If we can make things easier for the tenant, even better. Um, so that's a little bit about the app. Um, and last but not least, it's not unique to TDS Custodial. It's obviously offered in uh, TDS Insured as well, but our award winning customer service. So. Although we're speaking a lot today about technology and about how things are, um, you know, have advances and things that we can do to streamline the process, we can't forget that there's, you know, a human element to this as well. Um, and technology can only take us so far sometimes. Um, so if there is anything that you're not sure of, um, or if you're having difficulty with any of the features, um, then we're here to, to help with that. Um, we have the fastest call and um, email answering times in the industry, which we're, we're really proud of. Um, and um, and yes, yeah, so if there is something that you need, and you know, obviously email or, or call us and, um, and hopefully you can experience that great customer service that we always uh, harp on about. So that's a very brief overview of some features and functions of, of TDS Custodial alone. Um, what I'm going to do now is hand over to the expert on the depository integration um, for Christian to, to tell us a bit more about some of the, the features of the depository itself, how that integration works with, uh, with TDS and how it can be a benefit for, for you as an agent. Thanks, Kelly. Um, before I get cracking, I just was going to say we I can see there's a few questions that have come in, a couple from Amy and one from Sarah. Um, we will be we will be coming back around to those questions at the end. So anyone watching this, do please drop your questions into the question section on your dashboard. Um, and like I said, we're gonna we're gonna come around to those at the end. We'll answer as many of those as we can in detail. And obviously, if we do run out of time for answering those. We will circle back after this event and get answers out to you via email or whatever. So do please drop any questions in there, no matter how big or small those questions may be. Um, drop them in there. And like I said, we'll circle back around to those at the end. Um, right. So, yes. So our, our integration with um, with TDS. So, yeah, what we've what we've really done is I think for all agents, there's been a huge frustration in recent years as tech has crept into more and more aspects of, of everything that we do of products and systems not talking to one another. And it, it, it's really frustrating. It does create those those inefficiencies within solutions that are meant to deliver efficiencies to your business. So um, so when we're concluding an undisputed tenancy within our platform, really what our platform does. So as I touched on earlier. We pick up the process once notice served. So we have an email nurture campaign that takes your tenants and landlords, primarily tenants, through preparing that property. We facilitate, uh, depending on how an agent configures our platform, these things can be done in-house, but we can facilitate a tenant booking their checkout, submitting their cleaning details. Um, through our other TDS partner integration that we have with Inventory Hive, which is another um, TDS recommended partner provider, we have a rich integration with Inventory Hive as well. So if you use them or your inventory clerk uses them, um, when a checkout is completed within seconds of that report being submitted, we can capture and distribute a checkout report. We can capture meter readings, which we have a utility partner we can send those on to. Um, and we can actually capture any dilapidations within that report that are designated as a tenant liability. We can pull them all into our system. So if you use one of our integrated inventory providers, potentially you might never have to read a checkout report again, which is 
quite a big claim um, and quite nice. Um, but we import all of those issues along with any evidence. So we'll we'll pull in the item, the description, any photos of that issue, the reference point within the inventory. And then we've got um, segments where you can add extra evidence like an invoice or you know uh, or emails about it if you've got previous history of talking about the issue with the tenant that then frames a very fact and evidence based conversation around deductions um, and because we make it very evidence based and we remove the emotion um, last year over 70 percent of all proposed deductions on our platform were accepted by tenants with no renegotiation whatsoever so we make that the journey to that point and hopefully getting through that much quicker. Once a tenant and landlord have all signed off on the proposed deductions, um, the last action you will do within our platform with TDS Custodial is you will basically just sign off on the final balance. So it will say you've got a thousand pound deposit, you agreed £350 worth of charges, so that's £650 back to the tenant. Do you agree? Yep. And the moment you click that button, our API integration with TDS Custodial tells them exactly that. Deductions have been agreed. This is the breakdown. And actually, within our platform, that now closes off the tenancy. We generate a completion report. We capture a, uh, a call in the, in the log on the platform that says this has all been sent to TDS. And then TDS at that point will then simply re-verify those charges with the tenant and then distribute the funds accordingly. Um, I actually just wrote down a note when Kelly was talking about the, the tenant app um, because that's reminded me we need to actually build that into our workflow because one of the benefits of the app is you get push notifications. So mm -hmm. as a tenant, when a deposit reaches refund stage, they will get, if they have the app on the phone, they will get a push notification saying you need to you know, agree and submit your payment details. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're going to be looking at, at plugging that recommendation into our comms so that, again, it's just that smoother journey. At the moment, a tenant will get an email from TDS saying, please verify and please provide this data. Um, but if they can have an app that pings up and they can submit it in a secure environment there and then, again, embracing technology, making it easier for everyone and, and making the tenant journey in that a really important part of that. So we make concluding an undisputed tenancy really as quick and simple and easy as it can be, while still capturing a really detailed log of how that's done. And what we didn't talk about, and I'll quickly touch on this now, is also um, the setup stage. So because we've got the API into TDS, when you're setting up a tenancy with TDS Custodial on our platform, all your user will be required to do is to uh, copy and paste the deposit certificate code into our platform. The moment you paste that in, it instantly then validates that certificate code with the TDS system. So it makes sure it's an accurate and, and um, live certificate reference. Um, it validates that. So TDS will then know that that particular deposit is being managed through the depository platform and it actually captures the deposit amount and pulls that into our system so it's one less data field you have to copy and paste over it makes sure that our records match up with tds so you're you're dealing with the right deposit amount again in terms of data manual data entry actually over the last year one of the most common uh, errors we saw through manual data entry was actually putting in a slightly wrong deposit amount just through a slip of a slip of the fingers on the keyboard. Um, so that eliminates that. So that's how we expedite the setting up of the tenancy in our platform. And that is how easy we make concluding an undisputed tenancy. So if we go on to the next slide, Kelly. So we've got the snap poll now, which I will start. So you'll see this coming up on your screen. Um, and our poll today is when submitting a deposit dispute and uploading all relevant documents, evidence, emails, etc. How long does this typically take you? Um, so everyone cast your votes now. I feel like a game show host, which is very exciting. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so whilst we're waiting for you guys to do that, probably, you know, just talk through, because I'm sure there are some on here who actually will day to day hands on do that. Mm -hmm. And we will have some senior bosses on here who 
kind of get what happens, but don't really know. So um, for those of you who don't do this hands on, typically when you're uploading a dispute, um, when you've sort of been discussing and, and nurturing this all out of any sort of record system, basically everything historical evidence wise and everything that has happened within your negotiations with the tenant now needs to be uploaded into the TDS system to create their dispute report in order for them to assign an adjudicator and review it and et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, depending on how big the dispute is and how complex and ongoing this has gone, this could be two or three documents and a handful of emails. Um, but I know I've spoken to agents where it is such a big case, you know, yeah. people have, and these are extreme examples, but, you know, I know people who've spent half a day or more collating mm -hmm. all of this because the scale of the dispute, the scale mm -hmm. of the information that, that needs to be included in there is really, really substantial. And I think the key thing to, to bear in mind here is that with the depository, it's when it comes to the submitting the dispute evidence with, with TDS, obviously that's only comes at the point where the parties have been unable to reach an agreement and, you know, they're, they're miles apart, a dispute is necessary. I think with the integration with the depository, what it's really promoting is something that TDS has kind of, you know, really kind of pushed forward for, for as long as I, I, I've been here, um, is that it's kind of preparing for the end of the tenancy, you know, having all that stuff to try to prevent it from actually getting to that point of a dispute. So actually, you know, communicating with the tenant, providing them with, with things like invoices or quotes, or, you know, really bringing to their attention why you are proposing to make a deduction means they're much more likely to agree to that deduction if it's not a shock, if it's not a surprise, yeah. if, they, if they have context to it. And I think that's where the depository kind of plays in nicely. I know one of the one of the reasons it took us a long time to develop this product to work in a way that we wanted was, you know, we had a lot of chats early doors with TDS about the balance of making this an easy platform that was easy to interact with. But at the same time, what we didn't want to see was we didn't want to make it too easy for a tenant to say, oh, I just want to dispute. Because mm -hmm. if we end up with literally one in two if 50 percent of cases become disputed i mean for starters that's totally untenable for you guys as an operation to facilitate that level of adjudication but how fundamentally is that helping anyone you know so we looked a lot at how we present the information how that works but also how we make sure tenants still have their rights under deposit laws and protection to raise a dispute if they see fit but whilst guiding them down a sort of best practice route, um, mm -hmm. you know, to, to avoid that. And we're, and we're going to talk in a minute as well. We'll, we'll get to a slide where we talk about uh, a very specific feature we, we sort of developed in talking with you guys to sort of help avoid that. So I think we've we've done quite well on those. Um, we have. 20 so votes. So I shall reveal the the results. I wish I had some like fancy music to go in the background. <laughs> this will make this so much I'll better. Pretend, I'll pretend to do a drum roll. <laughs> I feel like I need like a countdown clock or something. Um, so some interesting results here. Um, we've only so only one vote for for naught to, to thirty minutes. So that's a, a lucky person who uh, is seems to be very quick at submitting their evidence. But the um, the majority are, are in the one hour, hour and a half, or plus um, an hour and a half uh, categories. So that's that's interesting. And obviously, then um, I'm uh, you know good good reason for you guys to be on on this webinar and, and find out how we can we can cut that time down for you. Um, so thank you for participating in that. Um, as Christian said, um, we're going to go on now to just talk about the actual dispute submission side. So in the event that the parties are unable to reach a resolution um, and adjudication is, is necessary. Um, Christian, you just tell everyone how, yeah. how that works. So so as we touched on earlier, we, we're very much an evidence based system. So one thing I was adamant that we wanted to get away from is we wanted to remove as much if not all emotion from the process that we can. I think um, all too often what happens, whether it's a passionate agent or, or a frustrated landlord, you know, all too often that conversation with a tenant would begin with a lengthy email that at some point would set out a barrage of deductions. But all too often that email would start with something along the lines of, oh, it was so disappointing to see how you turn, returned the property. And right from the offset, 
any sort of sentence along those lines, you know, you're going to get your tenants back up. You might be disappointed. They might not have done what you've advised them to do in your emails and your preparation notes and, you know, um, and what they're contractually obligated to do. Um, but actually, emotion has no place in this. OK, there are only two things that are relevant, the contract and the law. And really, under those two groups, what as a landlord or as a landlord representative, are you legally and fairly entitled to claim from your deposits tenant monies? And so what we do is we, we take away all that, all that conversational bit and it is just purely facts. Here are the five deductions that we are proposing on your tenancy. And here is, you know, when you go into a deduction on our platform, you've not only got, right, it's, it's a cleaning issue and you've got a description of the cleaning and you've got photos of how it doesn't look great. But the agent can reference the tenancy clause that relates to what you've breached there. The agent could have uploaded or landlord could have uploaded an invoice as proof of that cost. Um, and any of that evidence is available to the tenant within that dashboard. So when they're looking at that issue, they can click on the tenancy agreement, open it, go to clause F6 and go, oh, yeah, no, I did. I did have to professionally clean the appliances or I was required to get a gardener in to maintain the garden you know, or whatever it is. And when you're presented with, here's the contract you signed, here's the check-in report that you can open, here's the checkout report. So we've got evidence to show it was clean, it's now filthy, and here's an invoice. That's really, really hard for a tenant to go, no, sorry, I don't agree. Um, and that's why, you know, like I said, last year, we saw over 70% of deductions agreed instantly. The great thing now moving on to a dispute submission is that because we gather everything in such a fact based, evidence based way and in our platform, we have the tenancy agreement, we have the check in report, we have the checkout report, all of the key documents that you guys require as part of an adjudication file to be uploaded is already in our system. So if you end up filing a dispute, um, potentially in our platform, it is literally two clicks of a mouse. So. We're going to talk about in a minute a feature that we have that when a tenancy is flagged for a dispute is a sort of last chance saloon to avoid that. If that doesn't work, all the platform will say is, do you have anything, any further evidence to add to the platform? And if you've been using our platform correctly, the reality is you shouldn't. The only exception would be if there's quite a major issue and you've been waiting for the invoice from the builder or contractor to come in you know sometimes there will be a delay on that or you know and those works might have been delayed because it's a major thing you might have had to get multiple quotes or whatever but there should rarely be a situation where you're having to upload evidence that hasn't already been part of that conversation and then you either say yes there is you upload it and then click submit or you say nothing further to add submit file and that is a dispute file done no logging into the TDS system, no replicating everything that you've got. And we present that report to TDS in a way that, that you guys really like because it compartmentalizes all the evidence um, and is really straightforward for you. So, so I think on there we were looking, I think about a third had said about half an hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. um, I did some brief polls in some agent networking groups the other day, and I think the average came in, the average response was about 45 minutes. Um, but as we touched on, you know, some are saying an hour and a half to two hours. And there are those extreme examples where it can take hours. Now, again, disputes are around 2% of tenancy conclusions and major disputes will be a fraction of that. So we never focus on this as, as the core element of what we do. But when, uh, th when these happen and they do happen, you know, even, you know, in our business, I think we average one dispute every other year um, in our agency, but they happen. I know other agents where we've made the comment of, oh, yeah, once in a blue moon, a dispute happens. And they're like, once in a blue moon, when a dispute happens, you mean a few every month. Um, we've thought about this. We've worked on this with TDS and it, it's removing all of that frustration that comes from products that don't integrate and don't talk to one another, that replicating work that you've already done. So if we hop onto the next slide, here we go. And so Hail Mary, this is, this is, this is the little label that we have given our last chance saloon to uh, prevent an issue from going forward to dispute. So 
there are two ways in which a tenancy can get flagged for a dispute within our system. So the first is a timeline process. So we have a timeline when proposal proposed deductions are first sent to a tenant that starts a 28 day clock within our platform. When those 28 days expire, if deductions haven't all been agreed to by then, a raise dispute button will appear on the tenancy dashboard. Um, on an individual deductions basis, like we said, let's use the example of five deductions uh, on a dashboard. Um, we have a three strike rule on any of those deductions. So when negotiating in an individual deduction with a tenant, once you go through three full rounds of negotiation, your proposal, their counter proposal, and so on and so forth, after three rounds, when they decline a deduction, next to their counter proposal box, they will also have the option to mark that particular issue to be flagged for dispute. Now, if a tenancy either overall or due to one or two deductions is flagged for dispute, when we get to that stage of progressing that and getting to a dispute file, we have this Hail Mary function. So um, this is basically a first past the post process. Okay, so what it means is that only one party, but any party, the agent, the landlord, or the tenant, before going to dispute can go, do you know what? There's a dispute of 500 quid, let's say. Call it 350 quid, and I'm happy to walk away. Now, what we recommend is that that's left for the tenant to do, because that tends to be, ultimately, they're the ones that typically are driving the desire for a dispute. So they're the what they're typically I feel the best ones to make a proposal of. They know what they're willing to walk away for is basically what I'm saying. Um, obviously, as an agent, you can turn that on a on your head. You can pick up the phone, and that's where you bring the personal element. And this is where for me, good tech works. We're not about removing humans completely. We're about freeing humans up to do the stuff that really matters. Now. This might be an opportunity where you inject that human element. This is where you jump on the phone with your tenant. Maybe even you set up a conference call with you and your landlord and your tenant and you go, come on, guys, let's talk about this. You know, this is ridiculous. I mean, I remember um, a few years ago, one of the TDS annual reports, I think the smallest deduction dispute that year was like £2.50 or £3. It was one wine glass. You know, like that's madness that, that that no one was willing to compromise on a three pound charge is, is crazy. So there's that opportunity to either inject your human side and your and your expertise at this stage to go, hey, you know, this is where we step in. This is where we bring everyone to a level playing field and we go, come on, guys, let's find a middle ground. And then it doesn't matter who proposes that amount because you verbally agreed it and someone will propose it and agree it if a hail mary proposal is accepted that cancels a dispute action so that instantly says no this is no longer disputed this is a completely agreed tenancy um tds are noted to that fact so that tenancy is unflagged from from pending dispute action and the whole tenancy is reconciled as we've said you sign off on the deduction balance that gets sent to tds they allocate funds job done if a Hail Mary fails or all three parties pass, because when they're asked to do a Hail Mary, they have a choice, make an offer or no, I want to proceed to dispute. As I touched on earlier, you will be asked, is there anything further? And this is asked to all parties again, landlords, tenants and agent. Is there any further evidence you wish to add to the file? They can they can upload that. And then uh, and then one, as we talked about, two clicks and your dispute file is done. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Um, so now the fun part, the questions. I was excited to get to this slide because that is my cat, Edward, looking quizzical um, and making his uh, modelling debut. Uh, <laughs> um, so let's have a look at the questions. Um, I think we'll just start start from the top and we'll, we'll work our way down. Um, so Amy has asked, um, do I have to be a TDS member to use the depository? Uh, good question, Amy. Um, we haven't, uh, I don't think, mentioned as of yet that the um, use of the depository is, is exclusive to, to TDS customers. So whether that be TDS insured or TDS custodial, you do have to use TDS to, to benefit from the, um, the depository. 
Yeah. Um, and guys, as we've talked about today, obviously we've really focused on the features of our custodial integration, but we do also have an insured scheme integration. So it, it's not quite exactly the same, but the core things that we touched on, it will validate the deposit registration certificate. Um, it facilitates the two click dispute submission report as well. Um, so that is there. I think the custodial is sort of a step up just mm -hmm. because the custodial platform is on a slightly more advanced tech platform than the insured scheme. But um, but yeah, we've got um, schemes with both. But yes, as Kelly said, we are an exclusive TDS member uh, product. So if you want to benefit from the efficiencies we drive within your business, um, you are going to need to either already be a TDS member or you're going to need to migrate, which adds us on, leads us on nicely to Amy's follow-up question. <laughs> I was which, thinking that. I was like, you're really building up to that next question, which I'm very up. keen to, <laughs> to answer. So, um, Amy, second uh, question from, from you. Um, but if you don't currently use TDS and, and want to, um, how easy is it to, to move over? Um, very easy. So we have a switching agreement in place with the other providers. Um, and I know just actually via the, the, the depository, we've actually, in, in recent weeks, I think moved over about three, um, three agents um, from another provider over to TDS Custodial. Um, we have the switching agreement in place. Um, we are provided with the data which we import into your TDS Custodial database and then the deposit monies are sent over um, and we link um, and marry the two together and the deposits are then protected with TDS Custodial from, from there. Yeah. Um, we actually so had the latest one just complete this morning. Yes, um, yeah. I, I know we're talking to you guys this morning and, and you know, just to say to the agents out there, um, wearing my agent hat, you know, talking to these guys who, when we were talking about all this, reassured me about what an amazing migration team and migration service TDS had in place. I think as an agent, I was always like, mm, we'll, we'll see when we do a few of these. And we've now done at least three of these. And I have to say the feedback from all of those agents has been absolutely spot on. This has been just as easy, if not easier, than they thought it could be. So, you know, they've given absolute five stars to TDS in terms of managing that migration process. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all thumbs up from everyone who's who's made that leap so far. And I'm, I'm glad you said that, Christian, because if I said it, I'd be biased as it's my team that <laughs> deal with those transfers. So the fact that you've said it, it's, uh, you know, it can't, can't be questioned. Um, so thank you, Amy, for, for those questions. And um, yeah, anyone who, who obviously doesn't currently use TDS and interested in using either TDS custodial um, and obviously with the, the integration with the depository, um, we've got some contact details coming up on, uh, on, on the next slide so we can uh, arrange a, a conversation and, and, and get that moving for you. Um, so we'll move on to Sarah's question. Um, I think this was regarding the API that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, so we use Repit. It seems like we've been going back and forth um, and you were looking to, to find out where that integration is. So, yeah, we have um, um, the, the API um, in, in custodial. Um, the It's all built on our side. So any kind of delays or blockers at the moment is actually on the side of the, um, of the software providers doing the development on, on their side. Um, so in terms of Reap it individually. Um, I believe that they are, um, the, you know, that the have committed to, to integration. So I will look into that, Sarah, for you, um, and then I'll communicate. Um, sometimes what we need is actually our agent customers to make sure that their providers are, are aware that this is something that they're interested in and something that they want to, to push forward with. Um, so what I'll do is I will um, drop you a, an email afterwards, and um, and we can have a chat about that and, and see how we can progress that and, and get that in in place as soon as possible. Um, Sophie's question, what's the best way to provide all of this information to tenants? Uh, we're an agency customer, obviously using our, our custody or scheme already, which is great. Um, so we communicate a lot with the tenants directly from the TDS custodial side. So any actions, um, any um, changes made, it triggers automatic communication to the tenants. But in terms of making them aware of some of the features, um, including things like the app, um, what a lot of our customers tend to do is um, have a bit of a template um, when you're serving the documents to the tenant, the deposit protection documentation to them. That's a great place for a kind of, you know, covering letter email template to, to highlight some of the things, including the, the tenant app. Um, our website is also a, you know, it's it's got such a wealth of information on there. Um, and actually some of those um documents and, and guidance and, and FAQs are, are, you know, actually directed towards the tenants. So I think, you know, even providing them with links to the TDS lounge will give them a lot of information and um, 
again kind of adding and hopefully benefiting this preparing for the for, for the end of the tenancy making sure tenants are aware of what their obligations are the tds lounge is a, is a great way to do that and you know using the resources that, that we've put together for that for that benefit um and again that's that's you know that's that's a large part of what we facilitate so that that email journey uh, or you know whatever whatever format you do it in um is a good approach for agents to take but it is a manual process that you need to make sure you're on top of our platform takes tenants on that entire journey so right from the introduction email that says hey you know we're this agent's end of tenancy platform this is fundamentally what we're here to do um we have weekly emails that go out in the last four weeks of the tenancy which are basically like four weeks to go this is what you should do this week three weeks to go etc cetera, etc cetera. um our entire email journey comms journey that our platform takes tenants and landlords on is completely customizable so our platform has i think currently somewhere around 80 different emails depending on whether that emails to an agent user a landlord or a tenant and the journey that tenancy goes on um, but all of our email comms and our platform is completely white labeled and we have our own embedded email wizard where as an agent you can go in and if you wanted to you could customize all of those 80 emails now before land uh, before agents out there panic and think oh my god i don't want to customize 80 emails don't worry you don't need to there's probably about six to eight that we would strongly recommend and those are largely the introduction email to your landlord and tenant the four weekly emails I just said about that nurture your tenants through what to do each week, just to make sure that what is stated aligns with what you require of your tenants. And then the the thank you, the sort of conclusion email that goes out at the end. Those are the sort of eight that we strongly recommend agents jump in and customize right at the start. But if you want, you can go in and customize every single email in there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Christian. A um, couple of questions from Sarah, um, just asking about the integration um, API with TDS um, and whether that would then also just, I think, automatically integrate with the the, the depository. No, no, no. Uh, that would be that would be <laughs> nice. Um, and then and maybe ne ne next step in uh, in, in uh, the um, technology that, that we look at. But yeah, at the, at the moment, it would be your your software, your platform, whatever it is you use information added onto it to there and then that pulls through to, to the TDS site depository obviously would be a, a separate platform um, for, for you to, to log into um, but I, I like your style Sarah and I like your I like your thinking <laughs> yeah that would be nice I mean obviously Sarah just so you know I mean for us integrations are are the biggest part of where of what we're working on really going forwards now so that will be you know we've already done six partner integrations two of which are with tds so we've already got partner integrations in there crms are a huge part of where we go forwards with that um but it is a long and slow process it takes time to get those into place um there is also a hugely broad scope on terms of what an integration means because um, for us, we could capture a relatively simple one that would pull in property and tenancy and landlord data, but that's it. Um, or we can go really all knobs and whistles so that when you put in your CRM that a tenancy is not renewing and is concluding, um, that automatically triggers the process in our platform. And for example, with the insured scheme, when you get to the reconciliation of funds, that is sent back into the accounts package that you have in your CRM. So you know, we remove humans from it completely. Um, these are all things we're going to be exploring and looking at. Um, but no, this would be its own sign in. But one of the things that, you know, really, I think to highlight what, what, what Kelly's pointed out is they're getting more and more CRMs for the registration process. So really at the registration stage, more and more CRMs will now enable you to pretty much one or two click that deposit registration. And then if you use our platform at the end, because of our integrations back into TDS, you know, it ensured when you complete a tenancy within our platform, that auto concludes your deposit registration certificate within TDS. So when you refund, if you are an insured client and you hand that money back, you no longer need to go to the TDS dashboard separately and close off that and submit that information. All of that happens instantly and it's captured within our platform. And as we've talked about in here with custodial, once you once you agree on the reconciliation, that goes off to TDS. And again, 
that then is automatically closed. It's all captured in our system. We generate completion reports that if you want, you can leave in our system, but you can also download, save to a tenancy folder, save to your CRM, wherever you want. And that is a complete sort of capture of, of all the key actions, agreed deductions that happened um, in that. Um, Sarah also goes on to see, let's say, without seeing it in action, might be missing something, but it sounds a lot like the end of tenancy through TDS. So. Um, with TDS, my understanding is that you input what the agreed deductions are. Um, we facilitate everything that happens up into that agreement. So as we've talked about, nurturing a tenant to prepare a property to hand it back and very much that dialogue as well, just to say it isn't a lecturing dialogue of you will do this or you will pay. It is, hey, guys, do this and you will get your deposit back faster and with less deduction. So it's a very friendly helpful you know here are the top tips on how to make mm. sure you get your deposit back quickly and and fairly yeah, um, I, I think just with with just on on that point with our site when you are raising a repayment request you're, you're right sarah you're you're inputting the individual items if there's something that you're claiming for but it's purely just the amount so if you're making a deduction of 500 pounds for easy maths, I didn't put myself on the spot. 250 for rent arrears, 250 for cleaning. You're just filling in those boxes. And then that's triggering automatic communication to the tenant saying your agent are going to deduct 500 pounds for this and that. And, and, and that's it. So no evidence or, or anything is, is provided to the tenant at that point. So the depository, um, the, the, the platform there is kind of what we what we alluded to at the beginning in terms of making the tenant aware with the evidence with the documents so they're not just kind of getting a these are the deductions do you know this this is what's happening without any kind of context to it it's um it's i, I guess it's a, a a more friendly customer journey for the tenant that is hopefully taking away some of the perhaps manual tasks you're already putting in place in terms of maybe pre end of tenancy sending them you need to do this and you need to do that you might be manually doing those things at the moment or you know dropping around to, to the tenancy um, to, to the tenant to, to do a kind of pre checkout um, walkthrough or anything like that you can use this platform to, to, to kind of you know do certain automate some of those things and, and can you schedule it Christian is that is that a, can you like um like for, for certain dates or do you manually trigger at these points so everything is very much automated in our system there's, there's very little that you do manually um in terms of from an agent's perspective what you know what we the the two things that we're trying to give is from a manager from both a managerial and a day-to-day -day user thing is an instant oversight of where progressing tenancies are. So we've got a really clear timeline dashboard, whether you're a day-to-day -day user who concludes tenancies or you're a manager going, what's happening with our concluding tenancies? You come in and visually you see where every tenancy is at. You can see red icons of actions outstanding. And then all the sort of itemized sort of stage actions are also grouped at the top. So, you know, what, what we say to all of our agents is really, for the day-to-day -day user, it's those boxes at the top that they focus on. What we recommend is an agent will log in two or three times a day and literally they'll scan across the top and they'll go, oh, okay, there's two checkouts that need confirming and there's three deductions that need that have been responded to I need to respond to. They can just click on that box, go into those two, clean those things, you know, and then move on. You know that you've progressed those five outstanding actions all of your tenancies are on track and you can then move on to your other property management duties, whatever they might be. Yeah. Um, so we have run a, a little bit over, but I think we probably have enough time to squeeze in one or two more questions. Um, there's a couple of questions here um, regarding the inventory hive integration um, and another question about um, a, another checkout kind of pr provider and, and how that can work. So is that Christian? Yeah, so if I, if I quickly together. talk about that. So one of the things we've done on our platform is we've given agents a lot of control. So I'm not going to waffle on too much about that, but you guys have access to constantly tweak and customize the platform to work the way you want to. Um, and one of those is we have a page of integrations. And like I said, we've now got six partner integrations on that page. And you literally will go in here and you will switch on your inventory hive integration. And whether you use inventory hive in-house or you have a clerk who uses it, they will also switch on the inventory hive integration for your account. And that is it. That is how those accounts talk. And then when the user on inventory hive submits that checkout report, Within about 30 seconds to a minute, it does get queued with their system. So, but it's literally, I think, I think the longest we've had to wait for the data to be pulled in is two minutes 
from a report being completed. We capture the full checkout report, and that is, according to settings, distributed to your landlord and your tenants. Um, so you no longer need to worry about sharing it and it notifies them it's all been ready. We capture all the meter reading data, so the meter reading, the reference number, and a photo of the meter reading if taken. And again, that is all captured in our system, distributed to parties. We have another integration with a service called Please Connect Me. So if you use that, we send that all instantly to them and they close bills. And then critically, any issues flagged as tenant liability within the checkout report are all brought into our platform in draft form. So uh, an agent will get a notification saying your draft issues are from, have been imported from Inventory Hive, please review. And you'll go in and in there will be your five things. And like I said, it will have pulled in the category, the description, any photos and the reference point within the report. And then as an agent, you will just decide, are you going to propose that deduction? What amount is assigned? As I said, you can add other evidence like you can reference a tenancy contact clause that's relevant you can upload additional evidence like an invoice as proof um, but the point is that's all pulled in so uh, you, in theory you should with an inventory hive integration switched on you should never have to read a tenancy checkout report again because everything relevant in that checkout report to this part of the process is sat in your system ready and waiting for you to just edit and send on um, and then Maria has asked a question saying, or oh, can you use depository with your own checkout clerk? So um, Inventory Hive, we are a TDS partner. We have an integration with them. We have rolled out two other Inventory Clerk integrations. So Inventory Base, which is a broadly used software, and also No Letting Go in their capture software. So if you, if you or your clerk uses any of those softwares, you will benefit from the functionality we've just talked about. Um, Outside of that, if your clerk doesn't use either of those softwares or does things manually, uh, in brief, no. They will send you the checkout report. You upload it into the system. You input the meter reading data that's in that report into our dashboard. You manually uh, propose the items that need to be uh, discussed for deduction. Um, so yeah, you will need to be manually extracting that data. But if, if whether in-house or your inventory clerk uses any of the three uh, software suppliers that we've talked about, um, you can benefit from that integration. And there is no charge for that integration, either from our partners or ourselves. You literally just switch that on and you benefit from, from that, that huge leap forward in, in platforms talking to one another. Perfect. So just to, to, to wrap up, I think one, one minute on, uh, on this last question, cost. Um, I don't think you're speaking to me, Sarah, but just to confirm, TDS Custodial is, is complete, completely free. Um, Christian, very, very quickly, cost-wise. So very quickly, we don't charge any setup fees, and our subscription starts from just £50 per month. So £50 plus VAT per month is our starting subscription. Um, we can't really, t I can't tell more without understanding the business, but basically you pay a subscription based on the size of your managed, uh, your managed lettings portfolio. Brilliant. Oh, perfect. I think we got through all of those questions, but if anyone thinks of any, anything else or anything else that you want to discuss with us or there's any features and functions that you think, my goodness, I need that in my life. Um, let's get started. Then you can book in a demo with TDS Custodial and the depository. Um, there's a, a link here with the, the address. Um, when we email this to you afterwards, you'll be able to click on the link um, and book in that demo. Um, and then we can obviously tailor what we're what we're talking about, be a bit more specific to, to actually your company, your setup, and 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 what your needs are. So that is everything. Uh, we've managed it within within the hour, which is which is always good. I think me and you, Christian, we could we could talk for <laughs> a lot longer. Yeah. Um, I don't know who's me. worse. God, never give me free reign. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's that's everything for today. I hope everyone found this useful and um, and enjoyed the the webinar. Um, thank you, Christian, obviously for coming along and uh, and, and presenting. Thank you for uh, no, you're very welcome. And I will, I'm sure, sure I'll see you for round three soon, soon enough. Um, but for everyone else, thank you for joining us. Um, and have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.